sleep again, fiddle. This will never do. Everyone else has finished their work and gone home hours ago. You're still three short of your daily quota. This is not good enough, fiddle. <laughs> uh, sorry, Mr. Dullsworth. Uh, I'll get those seen to right at once. Let yourself out when you're done. I shall be in my office attending to business, and I don't want to be disturbed. Yes, Mr. Dullsworth. Hello. Mr. Fuddle. Mr. Bertram Fuddle. Yes, but it's actually Bertram Fiddle. It's close enough, Mr. Fuddle. This is Mr. Dullsworth's mother. I'm calling you because I hear you have some detectivating experience. Well, yes, I do have a certain reputation for sleuthfulness. Very good. I need someone to do some investigating for me. And as I've been unable to get hold of the esteemed Mr. Holmes, you will have to suffice. Um, certainly, madam. Let me be brief, Mr. Fiddle. My son has been acting most peculiar recently. Find out what he is up to and report back to my house immediately. Good gracious. This seems like the beginning of an adventure. I must finish my work here as quickly as possible. I'll put this in my pocket until I want to use it. Selling soap is thirsty work. Ah, this tea is revolting. Telegram circuits on. Fuse capacitator fusing. Time to sell some soap. Hmm, who seems like a suitable customer? I'm calling from Dullsworth Soap Company with an ex- How did you get this number? Do you know what time it is? It's my relaxing time! That's what it is! Do I sound relaxed to you? Do I? I'm terribly sorry. Sorry? I'll make you sorry. Don't ever call this number again. Oh, my eyes! Speak up, my eyes are hurting. Greetings! I'm calling from Dullsworth Soap Company with an exclusive offer. Dullsworth, you say? I got some Dullsworth shampoo in my eyes and couldn't see for weeks, and it still stings. I wouldn't use that stuff on my cats. It's a menace. Goodbye. you, Margaret? Uh, no. I'm calling from Dullsworth Soap Company with an exclusive offer just for you. Soap? Oh, no, no, no thank you very much, Lee. I, I never use the stuff. I like things dirty. Ta-da. Hello, who is this? Hello, sir. I'm calling from Dullsworth Soap Company with an exclusive offer just for you. Really? Just for me? How delightful! Yes, yes it is. For a limited period only, we are offering you a free flannel with every bar of adequate soap you buy. A free flannel, you say? Oh, wonderful! I'll take one, please. Really? I mean, excellent! I shall have those dispatched to you right away! Mr. Quindry speaking. Hello. I'm calling from Dullsworth Soap Company. And? Would you, perchance, be interested in purchasing some of our perfectly adequate soap? Whatever for? Its unique formula is guaranteed to make you fairly clean. I don't have time for this newfangled cleanliness in my life. Goodbye. Guy Hardwood speaking. What do you want? Come on, come on, spit it out. I ain't got all day. I'm an exceptionally impotent person. Greetings. I'm calling from Dullsworth Soap Company with an exclusive offer. 
Fiddle, you old dog. Is that you? Uh, no, no, most definitely not. Goodbye. Yes? Greetings. I'm calling from Dullsworth Soap Company with an exclusive offer. Go on. Would you be interested in a bar of our new, even more adequate soap? Whatever for? Well, it is very good for cleaning. Does it remove stubborn stains, like blood, for example? Um, probably. Oh, well then, I'll take five, no, six packets right away. Ooh, jolly good. Mr. Grotto's residence. Would you be interested in a bar of our new and improved, even more adequate soap? Soap? No. Not now, not never. Soap bad. Melts you, it does. Right. I'll put that down as a no, then. Yes? Would you be interested in a bar of our new, even more adequate soap? No. Didn't think so. Hello? What do you want? Would you be interested in a bar of our new, even more adequate soap? How rude! Goodbye! Hello? Mr. Spongewell speaking. Would you be interested in a bar of our new, even more adequate soap? Not today, thank you. I'm quite clean enough. Hello! Greetings, madam. I'm calling from Dullsworth Soap Company. Would you like to buy some soap? What flavour? Flavour? Um, sort of cleany, flowery? I love soup. I'll buy some. Sorry, madam. I think you misheard me. I said soap, not soup. Oh, that is a shame. I really wanted to buy some soup. Well, this soap does make a tasty broth. It does? Then I'll buy a packet. Thank you. Jolly good. <clears throat> At last, my work is done. I need Mr. Dullsworth to stamp my work ticket. Mr. Dullsworth? Mr. Dullsworth? Wherever could he be? Well, I never saw him leave. Mrs. Dullsworth was right. He is up to something. I wonder if he's in the closet. These look like the clothes he was just wearing. A secret exit! This must be how he sneaks in and out without anyone noticing. Mr. Dullsworth is slipperier than he looks. What does Mr. Dullsworth need a secret tunnel for? Mrs. Dullsworth, a formidable woman. Her eyes seem to follow you around the room. Oh my, sales of soap are slipping. And look at the cost of ink. It's extortionate. What a tidy desk. Mr. Dullsworth's stamping machine. I'm sure I will be permitted to use it in his absence. Bother, it's inkless. These are debtor's letters. Mr. Dullsworth isn't as squeaky clean as everyone thinks. Hand lotion. He must like keeping his skin soft. Mr. Dullsworth's work diary. So this is what he does in here all day. Turn that frown upside down. 
I wonder if something is bothering him. A souvenir from the delightful town of Grimsthorpe. The witty motivational painting. Wait, there's something behind it. It's an Emerson and Burke safety safe. Solid as a rock. Red ink! A letter, quite perfumery, and sealed with a kiss. Should I be dabbling in matters of the heart? What a tidy desk! Aha! Now I am legitimized! I can see the soap making machines. It's bolted tight. He's got clean away. What could he possibly be up to? Good evening, Mr. Fiddles. Working late again. That lovely wife of yours must be very proud. Indeed she is, Mr. Tibbs. But this is merely a short-term position until I find myself a suitable adventure. Of course, sir. I understand. I actually am an author. Romance novels is my thing. This job is merely to pay the bills until I get myself a publishing deal. Good for you, Tibbs. Now if you will open the gate, I'll be off. I'm afraid you can't leave until you've finished your work. A pleasant and uneventful evening to you, Mr. Fiddles. Evening, Burble! Evening, Burble! Distinct lack of murderings lately. Jeff the murderer not struck again for a long time. Let me have a look at that. Obviously a slow news day. Uh, tell me about it, sir. I've been shouting about nothing for over a year now. Well, they do say no news is good news. <laughs> not for me, it ain't. Good evening, sir. You're working late. Yes, sir. Another convict escaped last night and ran down the sewers. It's like a maze down there. An escape? How thrilling. Indeed. Whisked clean away whilst no one were looking. Was the convict dangerous? That's not for me to say, sir. I'm just here to fill in some gaping holes. This bin is full of peels. I must find Mrs. Dalsworth's house and report my findings to her. The Dalsworth estate is at the top of Tormentley Hill, if I recall correctly. Bertram, over here! Evelina! Fancy seeing you here! How are you? I've not seen you for such a time. Off having fantastic adventurings, no doubt. Um, not exactly. I, uh, how are you? Have you been busy? Not at all, Bertram. There is so little news to report upon nowadays. Since all those dreadful murderings stopped, I've had nothing to do. 
I'd really hoped that the Jeff the Murderer story would make my name as an independent investigative journalist. But it's been so quiet recently. Even Sherlock Holmes has got away on an extended holiday. I hope something newsworthy happens soon, or I may be forced to make my own headlines. I'm almost tempted to murder someone myself, just for something to write about. Ah. I'm uh, currently investigating a case for Mrs. Dalsworth. It's nothing much, but I'm hoping it may turn into some sort of fantastical adventure. Dalsworth, eh? Here's a name I've not heard in a while. I know a few things about old squeaky clean Dalsworth that would shock the likes of you. Really, madam? Do you mind? Oh, la di da Does your lady friend want some flowers? Oh, no. She isn't my... I mean, I mean I'm not her... The, the, oh. No, thank you, madam. I'm not a flowery person. Suit yourself. What are you doing? I'm protesting, Bertram. My dear friend, Walter, has been thrown into prison simply for being an artiste. Until Walter is set free, I shall remain enshackled here. Well, I hope you really stick it to the man, Oscar. Me too, Bertram. Me too. A rather bleak and sinister alley. I have an appointment with Mrs. Dullsworth. I can't hear you. There must be a fault on the line. Can you hear me? Nod if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Very much so. Those vulgar messages are an eyesore. I'm not letting you in until I know who you are. Bertram Fiddle. Why didn't you say so? You're late. The Dullsworth Estate looks like they've cleaned up with their soap business. They must have made a packet. Good day, sir. That's a sizable hole you're digging. Yes, sir. Mom has instructed me to dig it, though I don't know why. How do you do, Mom? You're late, Mr. Fiddle. I've been watching your dilly-dallyings. It is the sign of a simple mind. That was no dilly-dallying. That was top quality investigative strolling you witnessed. He has a weak mind, Mr. Fiddle, and is easily led astray. Lately, he has a crazy look in his eyes. I've seen it before and know he is up to something. I only have his best interests at heart. I need to know what he is doing. I did find this letter in his safe. It would appear that your son is in love. Love? What does he want to be in love for? He tried that once before and I had to put a stop to it. I knew what she was planning, even if my Algernon didn't. view of the soap factory. I like to keep a close eye on my son. Recently, he has become even more feckless than usual. I'll 
be off then. If I uncover any more news, I'll be sure to let you know. I will leave no stone unprobed. Make sure you do. I'm only trying to protect him, Mr. Fiddle. A mother is a boy's best friend, Mr. Fiddle. Goodness me! It's you! Yeah, I am! <laughs> oh my! Um, don't move! I'll get help! Well, 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 Fiddle, I must admit you had me fooled. I never would have suspected you were Jeff the Murderer. Sherlock, what are you doing here? I thought you were on holiday. I just got back, and it's lucky I did, you despicable fiend. But Sherlock, it wasn't me. How could you think that? Well, let me see. Let's look at the evidence. There's a dead body, and there's you. You're quite mistaken. I saw Jeff run off in that direction. It's a shame there aren't any witnesses to back up your ludicrous story. You, madam, did you see what happened? Indeed I did, Mr. Holmes. I heard a scream and looked out my window and saw that man standing over that poor dead lady. Well, thank you, nosy old crone. <laughs> That's all the proof we need. Sherlock, you can't honestly think it was Bertram. Look murderous footprints leading right to that wall. Take him to Jail Street. Right you are, sir. But it wasn't me. I'm innocent. <laughs> if I had a penny for every time I've heard that one, Fiddle. <laughs> Take him to jail. <laughs> Looks like you won't be winning any wages now, Fiddle. Something doesn't smell quite right, Sherlock. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Watson, you have to believe me. I'm not Jeff. I know, Bertram. I know. Send for Gavin. Tell him I need help. Of course. Hold tight, Bertie. Oh, shush, Watson. <laughs>